man. God, I really hope we killed the right baby Adolf. Right, right. Uh, so what should we do with this thing now? Uh, well, I was thinking, you know that old question, right? Mm -hmm. If you get a dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Yeah. You know what I'm thinking. If we go back in time yep. and kill that okay. guy. We've already killed someone. No, no, no. Come on. You know what I'm thinking here. We go back in time and have dinner again. <sighs> Not Actually, I'm down for that. But before that, let's use this. We'll throw the craziest rager of all time okay. using the two key elements to any good party. History and science. I like it. No, but George, what does this outfit really... You look like Mahatma Gandhi was a chef at a farm-to-table restaurant. Speaking of analingus, Ben Franklin is here. Inventor, entrepreneur, as Rick James knows him, that nice man's face and the cocaine tube. <laughs> look at this outfit. You look like Winston Churchill on Pride Weekend. Steve Jobs died of pancreatic cancer in 2011. They tried putting his pancreas in rice for a few minutes, but it didn't work. <laughs> Helen Troy has been called the most beautiful woman in all of history. And may I just say, really? <laughs> you? Okay, whatever. George Michael thought LGBTQ stood for let's go to the bathroom together? Question <laughs> James is here, in case he asks later. Um... And he looks like an American girl doll who was canceled for saying the N-word. <laughs> you are loved by Italians and hated by everybody else. You're the New Jersey of people. <laughs> Welcome to the Time Machine Rose, the rudest, funniest show where grown adults in shitty costumes say fucked up things to each other. And now, your host for the night, he led the Israelites out of slavery. He took down the Ten Commandments, a man who brought more Jews to the desert than the Las Vegas Dental Convention. Give it up for Moses! Hello. Hello, welcome to the show. Shalom. How are you? It's me, Moses. How you doing? Good Shabbos. How's your mother? The irritable bowel thing, she sorted it out very good. Thank you for coming to the to the show, the Kennedy Center, for having us in the couch concert, Time Machine Rose. And thanks to you for tuning in. We know you have a lot of entertainment options in the quarantine. You could be watching a Netflix documentary series about a, a gay method animal abuser that has about 30 minutes of actual information in it, but it's six hour long episodes for some reason. You know, you could be uh, texting your ex, not because you miss them, but uh, because you just want to feel literally anything after being inside for eight weeks. And we know you have six tabs of pornography open on your browser right now, and you're one dull moment away from switching over like a gun with the with the safety off. And uh, but stick around, you like it. And the horny stepmothers, they'll be there after the show. Don't worry, they got new ones every day. So, well, I'm Moses, as you can see. My career is obviously uh, in the toilet. I was the prince of Egypt. I literally talked with God. And uh, now I'm hosting a Mean Jokes costume show from my childhood bedroom. So that's how I'm doing. I'd like to thank... Uh, I'd like. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. I'd like to thank uh, my people, the Jewish people who are attending the roast for the first time. I know because it's free the first time ever. Okay. Yeah, the jokes are beginning. And listen, if you got a problem with the costume, keep it to yourself. The show's about the jokes. 
All right, you want to see a bunch of famous uh, historical criminals and pedophiles get dressed up fancy? Go watch an old White House correspondence dinner. All right, any year. Wow, okay. <laughs> some of you are saying, uh, some of you are saying, Moses, you're from 4,000 years ago. How come you're talking like a 75 year old man from Brooklyn named Abraham Finkelstein? And let me ask you this how should I talk? You're an expert on how people talk all of a sudden? You're a licensed Egyptologist? You got audio recordings from the ancient pyramids. You're hiding them with your tefillin and your talis. You never wore after your bar mitzvah. We never see you in shul. So don't tell me what to do. I'm the Jewish prophet. P-R-O-P-H-E-T. The other type of Jewish prophet that's called rent, folks, because of the, the landlords. Catch up, everybody. So let's get to it. I'm Moses. I took the Jewish people on a journey to the land of Israel. I'm the leader of the first ever birthright trip. All right. Yeah. 40 years in the desert with Jews. Can you imagine the quetching in the morning? It's terrible. Camping trip. Three days with Jews. It's the 40 years I'm there. Moses, thanks for freeing us from slavery and everything. But, you know, sleeping on the ground. My doctor says I need a special mattress. You know, and thanks for bringing the manna miraculously from the sky. It's just with my allergies. You know, do you have any gluten free options? It's horrible. All right. Well, enough of the personality bits already, Moses. You're saying we'll be here till Rosh Hashanah if you don't stop. Till Yom Kippur will be here if you keep doing him. Till Shavuos if you keep doing the bits, Moses. Till Shalashudis. So let's bring out the other roasters already. So uh, obviously in this format, if I say give it up for whoever, you can't clap. I mean, you could clap, but you'd be clapping by yourself like a schmuck. So uh, when I bring up each person, I'm going to tell you, put an emoji in the chat for the person. I know a guy like who talks like this would never say emoji, but, but, but bear with me. All right. Coming up first, let's bring him out. <laughs> let's bring out our first guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to queue up his song. Here he comes. The first guy that I'm bringing out, he was a failed science fiction writer. Who realized there was more money in religion than books. He founded Scientology in 1952. Now let's get an alien emoji in the chat to welcome L. Ron Hubbard. Hello, greetings, greetings from the other side. You all know that I have ascended, but I'm visiting you for the sake of this roast. Moses, nice to see you, of course. Creep me out. Very sorry? You creep me out. Uh, indeed, I happen to have that effect upon many people. I appreciate you saying so. Good, sir. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, L. Ron Hubbard. A lot of people don't know what the L stands for, Moses. I assume you're of those, those people. Uh, the L doesn't stand for a word. It stands for, let me see how many suckers I can get to sign up for this. Fuck it. The Mormons were successful. Of course, I have more to say on the subject, but we'll show you right now. Uh, send me a thousand dollar check for me to do so. Uh, otherwise, I shall uh, beat your ass behind closed doors. Good to be here. I'm Elron. You know, Elron, uh, you're the leader of a small, hated, secretive religion with uh, many famous members in the movie business. But other than that, we have nothing in common. All right. <laughs> Coming up next, <laughs> he was uh, he was a famous inventor. He brought us the electric light bulb and the first commercial films. Plus, he married his 16-year-old assistant because he's a creep. Let's bring out Thomas Edison. Uh, there was, uh, <clears throat> she was all of 18. Uh, but <laughs> no, she wasn't. No. That's what Google says. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, you both, uh, good to see you with your made-up religions. Uh, but it's nice to be here. I'm glad. You can also thank me for being here with inventing electricity. Uh, this entire thing is this all. This is all of me. Thank you. Looks like we got Clarence Thomas Edison, folks. All right, moving along. <laughs> if you don't like that joke, you're gonna hate the rest of the show. Okay, uh, coming up to the stage next. He's the creator of fast food, which is not kosher. The founder of McDonald's. He gave America nine types of hamburgers and two types of diabetes. Let's get a French fry emoji going in the chat right now. 
for Ray Kroc. Ray, welcome. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. As uh, Moses said, I am Ray Kroc, founder of McDonald's, not to be confused with Jim McDonald, of course, founder of the Kroc Shoe Company. Now, uh, I know you're all worried about my company, but I assure you McDonald's is doing great during this pandemic. In fact, our uh, our drive throughs are backed up almost as much as our customers' arteries. Uh, but I did want to say, uh, McDonald's, we are taking extra precautions right now. For example, we are requiring our employees to wash their hands regularly now. So you're welcome, America. <laughs> uh, I am very happy to be here at this Time Machine Roast, but I have a question. Why roast it? Pop it in the microwave for a few seconds and the show would be over in no time. I could have two shows in the time it's taken us to get through this one. But of course, with Moses running it, it'll probably go on for 40 days and 40 nights. Here's how you do it. You put me in charge of operations. You put uh, Edison in charge of infrastructure, L. Ron Hubbard on recruitment. And I know there's someone else here. Oh, yes. Napoleon. Uh, didn't see him. He's very small. I'm sure he's there somewhere. Anyway, I could take this measly local show and get it national. I could get it on Netflix. Oh, wait, there's already <laughs> practically the same show on Netflix, but with much bigger names. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We've got the quality lowered and we're just going to do more than they did. It's a great business model. Work for me. Uh, and this whole thing hosted by the Mick Kennedy Center. Sorry, Kennedy Center. Thank you for having us. A place I was impressed by until I found out it was a nonprofit. Don't get it. Anyway, just want to say a happy meal to be here, and already I'm loving it. Thanks, you schmuck. All right, let's bring up the last person. Uh, he was the emperor of France. He was uh, the original short king. Please, uh, let's get a croissant going in the chat right now for Napoleon Bonaparte. Mm. Napoleon. Hello, hello. Hello, je suis Napoleon. Huh? <laughs> I am so happy to be here tonight on the internet, a place I have never been before and therefore must conquer. I do not know how I will conquer it, but I assume it will involve something called a TikTok. <laughs> Merci to Moses and the Kennedy Center for hosting us tonight. But before going any further, any further, Moses, I ask that going forward, I am addressed by my full title, is Imperial Royal Majesty Napoleon I, by the grace of God in the Constitution of the Republic, Emperor of the French, and most recently, newly appointed Vice President of Employee Satisfaction at Amazon.com. <laughs> I, am, I am grateful to be online tonight and look forward to capturing the arts and minds of my opponents and to you the viewer both metaphorically and actually in your homes where you think you are safe but you are not <laughs> okay <laughs> all right and finally before we get the roasting started if you watched any quarantine comedy shows it's, uh, it's a little weird. There's a comedy roast with no audience. You're not really a performer. You're just the Meshuggah guy on the subway yelling Henry VIII at his little schmeckle to nobody. That's why tonight at the roast we're doing something unprecedented. We're having the professional laughers. So without further ado, I'd like coming up to your screen right now from the University of Rochester at a combined 11-something feet. Please uh, type a smiley face in the chat right now for Suresh and Rama. <laughs> we got an audience for the show. <laughs> Suresh and Rama, how you doing? Happy Good. to be here. Long time fans of the Time Machine Roast. Yes. Oh, thank you for coming, everybody. Suresh and Rama, by the way, they're doctors, so you better be appreciative of that in this time. <laughs> And I know Rama, she's a gynecologist, so I don't think she's really working on COVID, but she still went to medical school. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty hard. All right. <laughs> I know, I'm at home, everyone's slapping their legs. Okay. <laughs> good, good stuff. All right. Let's get the damn roasting started, huh? So, so if you've ever been to the Time Machine Roast before, 
you know this isn't our normal uh, format. Uh, what we're gonna do this time because it's a quarantine, we're gonna have some, we're gonna have a face off. So every age of these historical schmucks is gonna face each other. They're gonna say all the worst, meanest, funniest things they could say, and then you're gonna get a Facebook poll in the chat. If you're on Facebook, you get a poll. This is the good kind of Facebook poll. Usually, it's your friend's uncle, and it's which of Nancy Pelosi's crimes is most treasonous. That's <laughs> this one, you just vote for whatever person you thought uh, won the round. At the end, we'll announce who won the most rounds. So look out for the poll after uh, every round. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's get the roasting started, huh? How do we feel about that? Woo! 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow, they're going crazy over here. <laughs> okay, the first round we got uh, it's uh, Napoleon versus Thomas Edison. Going first, it's Napoleon. They're going to go two minutes each, then you vote at the end. Napoleon, you ready? I am ready to go. <laughs> I am so excited about a uh, Facebook poll. The only Facebook poll I have ever seen is a direct message that contained a very naughty picture from Elrond Hubbard. <laughs> that was a dick pic joke. Okay. Ah, we my first opponent tonight, Thomas Edison. Monsieur Light Bulb. Bing. <laughs> the greatest inventor <laughs> in the history of America. He stood, uh, apropos of nothing, just saying, he stood five foot ten inches tall, okay, which was quite tall in those days. <laughs> I'm normally <laughs> tall, I'm told. Just saying, okay, moving on, moving on. Burn in Ohio and died in New Jersey, which one could describe as a hero's journey. A hero's journey if the hero was a discontinued Amtrak route. <laughs> <laughs> I love trains. Anyone else who loves the train? Sound off in the comments if you love trains. Okay. <laughs> uh, Thomas Edison. He was a Steve Jobs. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I hear them. I hear them cheering for me as they always have. <laughs> Thomas Edison, you was a Steve Jobs of your time. Which is to say that you possessed incredibly little talent and stole your best ideas from others <laughs> and were widely considered to be qu'est-ce que c'est? What's the word I'm searching for in Anglais? Asshole! <laughs> 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 and that face of yours, you look kind of like the Quaker Oats guy if he took off his hat and also stole his best ideas from Nikola Tesla. <laughs> Who <laughs> did then died destitute and unknown thanks to you? You shit back. <laughs> <laughs> but to wrap it up, Thomas, thank God you existed. If not for you, what kind of light bulbs would hang willy nilly in fancy hipster bars that look divy but in actual expense incredible? <laughs> <laughs> merci, merci. That's all, that's all for Thomas. That's all for Thomas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Napoleon. All right, Thomas Edison, your response. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Uh, I don't know if I should actually get started or if I should just wait five minutes for your French ass to retreat. Um, <laughs> you, were five for, you were five for six inches tall. That's the punchline. There's, there's no joke. <laughs> there, you're just, just a tiny man. If I had to deal with you in person, I would just put you in the car seat and buckle you in and walk the fuck away. <laughs> uh, I, I can't believe they let you lead an army when you can't get cereal off the top shelf by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Your hat looks like a huge sanitary pad for a hippo. Uh, <laughs> pretty sure you kept your hand inside your jacket to play with your nipple rings. A lot of people don't know that about you. Hmm. And uh, you famously said, not tonight, Josephine. So you invented something, too. You invented erectile dysfunction, you innovator, you. <laughs> that is my response. Damn, son. Damn, son. <laughs> 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 All right, audience, uh, people on Facebook, you know what to do. 
They're going to put out the poll soon, so pick your favorite. So let's keep the show moving along. Next, coming to the next roast is coming up. We got Ray Kroc versus L. Ron Hubbard. Ray, you're first. Ready? I'm ready there, uh, Moses. Let's go. <laughs> All right. I'm talking today about L. Ronald McDonald, the founder of Scientology, a religion more fake than the nutrition facts on a McDonald's menu. He uh, brainwashed so many people into believing in his made-up religion, you'd think he was Moses. You know, uh, <laughs> like me, uh, L. Ron Hubbard served in World War II. Now imagine if something happened to the two of us. One of the only truly American religions wouldn't exist, and there'd also be no Scientology. <laughs> uh, you know, many famous people are Scientologists, as mentioned, uh, and also L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, <laughs> Scientology has more dirt on celebrities than the Hollywood Cemetery. Damn, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty bad there. Uh, you know, Scientology is a very secretive religion, more secretive than Amazon is about its number of coronavirus cases. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so I want to give a little history on Scientology. Apparently, or, or a little fact, uh, the souls of Scientologists are called Thetans, and they believe in reincarnation. So after death, the Thetans are launched back into the earth to land in the ocean off the coast of California, quite specifically. But at least we, uh, we know where the empty monster cans and used condoms come from. <laughs> now, apparently, L. Ron Hubbard, you composed a musical soundtrack to your 1982 novel Space Jazz, the single going, everybody get up, it's time to jazz now, welcome to the Space Jazz. It didn't, it didn't go over well. Um, <laughs> way ahead of its time. All right. Uh, the last years of uh, L. Ron Hubbard's life, he spent in a luxury motorhome, making him the most successful trailer park boy. And the last thing I'll say about him is that uh, following his death, Scientology leaders announced that Hubbard had to drop his body to continue his research on another planet. Now, on that planet, Hubbard was able to figure out how to grow potatoes and years later was portrayed by Matt Damon in a film based on his afterlife. I just want to say <laughs> Michael Keaton <laughs> is a better actor than Matt Damon. Okay, that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <thank> you. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. That was round two. You know what to do, people. Vote in the poll. Uh, 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 do you mind if I uh, pro lab my turn first before we vote? No, that's okay. We can be done. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ray Kroc, um, very, very funny, very witty. Um, I presume you stole that entire set from someone else. Uh, aptly named uh, Ray Kroc, Kroc, Kroc of shit. Uh, Ray Kroc, <laughs> the idea of McDonald's from two brothers, inspiring the first jingle. But um bum bum bum, I'm stealing it. Hmm? Uh, <laughs> one time McDonald's was a family <laughs> outing, and now it's the feeding trough for Walmart regulars and NASCAR and enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> Hamburgers, fries, and coronary heart disease for generations. <laughs> what you know about Ray Kroc? He did eventually build one of the world's most successful empires. Uh, no offense, Napoleon. <laughs> uh, Happy Meal was a brilliant marketing campaign. Psychological genius giving a positive sounding name for something that tastes horrible and is categorically unhealthy. The same type of marketing psychology used in the name Golden Shower. <laughs> for those of you watching at home, I say Golden Arches, be sure to Google Golden Shower. Ray was <laughs> with his business that his wife eventually left him. When he proposed to his second wife, he simply approached, took a knee, and said, I'll have number two. <laughs> <laughs> he added and supersized it. That's actually accurate. That's it for me. Thank you. Woo! the end of round two my bad <laughs> <laughs> because Moses would say my bad <laughs> <laughs> let's keep it moving round three of this time machine rose it's me Moses 
versus Napoleon. Let's go. Round three. I'm up first. Napoleon, you frog-eating bitch. <laughs> okay. I call you a French pussy, but that would be redundant. <laughs> First of all, you don't look like Napoleon. You look like Chris Christie dressed up as Captain Crunch for Halloween. Captain Crunch. Like Napoleon dinner, Mike. <laughs> Napoleon boneless wings. <laughs> I didn't realize when people said Napoleon was five foot two inches, they meant he was five foot two inches around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Napoleon up, uh, a mighty army, General Sal, Colonel Sanders, and Sergeant Cheese <laughs> Gordita Crunch Combo with large soda. <laughs> But your escort go fuck yourself, you beefy <laughs> shark. <laughs> yeah, no fat jokes. You were also short. I love that <laughs> educational A and E series about your life. I'm talking about little people, big world. <laughs> <laughs> the reason you lost in Russia is because they had a sign at the border that said you must be this tall to conquer. <laughs> Yeah, you lost six hundred thousand men in Russia, but then someone lifted you up on their shoulders and you found them again. <laughs> <laughs> Short. All right. So <laughs> was they put your their hand on your head and you kept going like this, but you couldn't reach them. <laughs> <laughs> you were unable to impregnate your first wife. What happened? Did you step stool up to her vagina break? <laughs> you just open up trying to reach it like a little kid trying to get to the cookie cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Napoleon's favorite way to relax was having someone bounce him on their knee like a horsey ride. <laughs> short. You make Guatemalan people look like NBA power forwards. <laughs> uh, in France, French fries are called fries, and to Napoleon, the show Tiny House is just called House. <laughs> <laughs> The empire was France, Spain, and Belgium. Wow, Belgium, the Delaware of Europe. Bargain. For the, <laughs> the country for people who can't handle the crazy pace of Austria. <laughs> that doesn't sound like an empire. It sounds like a bad divorce settlement. <laughs> yeah, I'm emperor. The judge says I get to rule Italy every other weekend. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Napoleon. Okay, okay, Moses, the man of the hour who led the enslaved Israelites to the desert for 40 years to the promised man, but now kind of in this scenario kind of looks like a guy who would hold on to your arm for too long while giving you directions, standing too close in Burrow, somewhere, some, somewhere in Brooklyn to hold on to you. Now you just go down, you're going to get on the G train, the G train, and his breath, it smells awful. He's a sexual predator, that guy, in present day. Anyway, you're the most important prophet in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and also the Baha'i faith, the last of which I assume was an oopsie. <laughs> According to Google, Moses was nine cubits tall. Speaking of heights, which I have some... <laughs> which after some research I found was close to 13 feet tall in today's <laughs> measurements. Oh yeah, I'm sure that was right. Okay, isn't it funny how history exaggerates the height or maybe the shortness of some people? Okay, maybe we shouldn't believe everything we read on Google because perhaps it was just British propaganda. Okay, moving on, moving on. Moses, you wandered the desert for 40 years. Well, that well, struggle was poetic. poetic. It sounds it's, like maybe it's, 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 it's just, just one time before the year to ask someone, someone anyone, anyone. Like, like, hey, which, which way is the promised land? <laughs> <laughs> men, men in directions, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> also, look at this guy's face and beard. Do you know what the difference is? 
Do you know you any know the difference is between Moses and the schizophrenic homeless guy who says he's Moses? Nothing. There's no difference at all. <laughs> you look like Rick Ruben before he lost the weight, but without any of the last thing Beastie Boys eat. <laughs> anyway, after 40 years, you almost made it, but dad just short of the promised land. You know what they say? One promised land in the hand is worth two in the burning bush. <laughs> <laughs> Back up, Moses, and then. <laughs> okay. That's the end of round three. They're gonna push out the uh, push out the votes there. All right. Moving along, round four. We're bringing back Thomas Edison versus Ray Kroc. Ready? Edison, you're up. Uh, first thing I want to say, I'm going to ask you, why did you name it Crock of Shit? It was right there. Like, you knew what you were cooking, and you could have named it a Crock of Shit. <laughs> and also, also, you've killed more black people than um, police through hypertension and high cholesterol, so I don't know what to talk to you. Damn, son. <laughs> your uh, your Big Mac could come with not uh, napkins, but it could come with two rolls of toilet paper for what it does to people's uh, insides. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations on choosing the creepiest mascot anybody has ever seen. A clown who hangs out around six children. <laughs> and that's my time. And that's my time. Okay, Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc, a lot to work with there. Your turn. Let's go. All right. I'm hearing a weird delay. It's bad. It's very bad. I think we should address this. <laughs> oh, what idiot has their laptop sound on? Mm. Audience, can you turn your speakers down? Mm. Sorry, so audience, I'm not supposed to roast you. <laughs> anyway, let me get going on Edison. Edison, a name associated with invention. Thomas, a name associated with Dave Thomas of Wendy, my arch nemesis. I mean, come on, Frosties, neither milkshake nor ice cream. Baked potatoes on the side. They don't even have meat right now. <laughs> Dave Thomas is a damned old fool and he knows it. Anyway, okay, back to <laughs> Thomas Edison. I forgot what I was doing here. Inventor of many things except a personality. Uh, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, or as I like to call them, heat lamps. I was expecting the cricket, <laughs> the crickets there. Uh, Thomas Edison invented the motion picture camera, with with without which uh, we wouldn't have the full majesty of the human centipede catalog. He also invented the very first electric car, which even back then came complete with a coexist bumper sticker. <laughs> Uh, Edison's only truly original invention was the phonograph, patented as the very first device to record and reproduce sounds. Not very fair to parrots, if you ask me. Uh, allegedly, the first person to ever record to a phonograph was Edison reciting the poem, Mary Had a Little Lamb. He was immediately sued for copyright infringement by Mother Goose, leading to the famous Goose Edison legal battle of 1878. Good on Goose, I say. She's a smart lady. <laughs> uh, Edison was born in Milan. Ooh, Milan, Ohio. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> Edison created the first industrial research lab in New Jersey. Under tight security, personnel in the wrong department would be immediately asked, what are you looking at? 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Edison was known as the Wizard of Menlo Park, which also happens to be the name of a Wizard of Oz themed porno starring a Kim Kardashian lookalike who slaps her cheeks together three times and says, there's no place like the shore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Thomas Edison's last words were, it's very beautiful over there, but take it with a grain of salt because he did die in New Jersey. Okay, that's it for me. <laughs> All right. End of round four. Moving on to round five. Audience, you know what to do. Round five, Elron Hubbard versus Moses. Ooh. Let's go, Elron. Moses. Moses. Um, some of you know uh, a lot of the story of Moses. Uh, of course, his mother placed him in a small vessel as a child and floated him down a river to escape execution by the Egyptians. And he floated down the river. He was eventually found and raised by a pack of wolves and a bear named Baloo. <laughs> <laughs> my kids enjoyed that one anyway uh some say jesus and other biblical figures were likely dark-skinned black perhaps but moses having killed a man in public and not going to prison for it was clearly a white man. damn son <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little too uh too appropriate. Uh, after talking to a burning bush and parting the Red Sea, Moses then wandered the desert for 40 years looking for more peyote. <laughs> What's going on? When God sent Moses back to Egypt to demand the release of the Israelites, Moses said he could not speak eloquent, eloquently enough until God allowed his brother Aaron to be his spokesperson, thereby creating a passage in the Torah. Dang, God, much obliged, but I ain't speak so good. Moses <laughs> <laughs> went up the mountain where he received the Ten Commandments and engraved them on the stone tablets. He remained up the mountain for so long that some of his followers feared that he might be dead. So they did what any logical person would do. They made a statue of a golden cow to work. Um, <laughs> the, the only thing I appreciate that are uh, audience members over here. Uh, <laughs> I am of, of cow descent. Anyway, uh, the Hindus appreciated the golden calf. That's the point. <laughs> and God and Moses, however, Moses, like a true prophet and loving religious leader, killed the people that made it by melting the golden calf and feeding it to them, to which Napoleon responded, that dude has a terrible anger management issue. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Jones was like, Kool-Aid is way easier, bro. If feeding them gold wasn't cool enough, he then wrote that song, Feed my people gold. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, smell Ron Cumbert. That's what I call you. <laughs> <laughs> what joke can you make about Mel Ron Hubbard that hasn't already been made about any other violent sociopathic con man cult leader? That's my question for everybody. <laughs> People will always say there's so many celebrity Scientologists, Tom Cruise, Will Smith, John Travolta. Wow, there must be something to it. But then when you look at the list of the rest of Scientology celebrities, you get the same feeling as finding out someone you went to high school with has recently come out as transgender. <laughs> okay, I guess. The guy from that 70s show? <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Doggy Fresh, the beatbox guy from the 80s? Weird. All right. <laughs> this guy stinks! <laughs> But Elron, let's not get distracted from the fact that you, uh, you're a creep. Here's a list of things you look like. You look like you get in the shower and then turn on the water. You look like you named a, your dog a full person's name. Like, come here, Charles William Jenkins the fourth, Good boy. You don't look like a school shooter. You look like the kid a school shooter warns not to come to school the next day. 
<laughs> you eat popsicles, you swallow the stick too. <laughs> you look like you eat onions like an apple. <laughs> you look like when you watch a horror movie, you, you root for the killer. You look like you, you go on sh YouTube and type in Schindler's List, just the gas chamber scenes. <laughs> Damn, son. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you laughed during the first 10 minutes of up <laughs> you look like you named the name testicles goofus and gallant <laughs> you look like the bottom of your feet are always dirty <laughs> okay. you look like you listen to true crime podcasts for ideas <laughs> <laughs> you look like your Starbucks order is a venti cup of milk. You look like <laughs> people at the beach got bit by a jellyfish just to have an excuse to pee on their leg. <laughs> you look like you drink male breast milk. <laughs> and lastly, worst of all, you look like your name is Elron. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's the end of round five. Moving along. Next round coming up. Ray Kroc versus Napoleon. Ray Kroc, you're up. All right. Hang hang on a second. Okay, there we go. Sorry, just had to zoom in a bunch on my computer so that I could see Napoleon. <laughs> uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, or as I like to call him, Royale with cheese. <laughs> Napoleon led the French Revolution. I re led the fast food revolution, not to brag or anything, but uh, my revolution killed more people. <laughs> uh, Napoleon, I apologize for not speaking French to you right now, but the only two words I know are petite and we, oui, and I, I know it's a roast, but I don't want to get too mean. Um, Napoleon, I know French isn't your first language. You uh, later in life learned to speak it, but you could only ever really write it in shorthand. Uh, Napoleon is so short that if he were alive today, he'd still be allowed in the McDonald's play place. <laughs> Napoleon brought the metric system to France. Uh, it's only because 190 centimeters sounds a lot taller than five and a half feet. <laughs> you know, Napoleon, he knows he's a small fry. He knows he's a little happy meal. He's a snack wrap. He's a single chicken McNugget. Yet he still insists his sausage is supersized. <laughs> uh, you know, I always wanted to put the French pastry called a Napoleon on the McDonald's menu. It's puff pastry and custard layered to create the most delicious inferiority complex. Uh, speaking of, of Napoleon's inferiority complex was diagnosed by his psychologist simply as syndrome. <laughs> Napoleon is so insecure that he sued Issa Rae for copyright infringement. <laughs> but you know, that insecurity made him real tough. So tough that if he, he were a stake, he'd be a wallet. Uh, <laughs> Napoleon sold the Louisiana Territory to the United States, leaving behind, in places like New Orleans, beautiful French traditions such as flashing your tits for a couple of plastic beads. <laughs> as a young adult, Napoleon wanted to be a writer and even wrote a romantic novella entitled, I'm Down Here. Uh, <laughs> alternate title being Little Women, Littler Men. Uh, friends of his who read the book told him uh, they liked the book, but admitted that for Napoleon, the bar wasn't very high. Uh, at the end of his life, after coming up short in the Battle of Waterloo, the British exiled him to an island off the coast of Africa, making him the first unofficial contestant of Survivor. <laughs> That's it for me. <laughs> okay. Napoleon. Well, let me start by stepping off of my soapbox and saying that Ray Kroc 
<laughs> you are actually a hero of mine. Step back on the box. I don't like being short. The founder <laughs> of McDonald's. Not the founder of McDonald's, but the usurper of McDonald's. This is the kind of conquering that makes my pantaloons tight. <laughs> Ray, Ray Kroc stole the simple idea of burgers and fries and shakes from the sweet and earnest McDonald brothers and transformed it into America's number one expert. Morbid obesity. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Moses. Keep that shit coming. Fun fact. <laughs> Uh, just a, a side to say that Rick Rock stood at only four, uh, five feet, four inches tall. Uh, that's true, Ray. You were tiny. But you were one of the most bloodthirsty businessmen in all of history. It sounds like he had a bit of a me complex. <laughs> because of his ruthless ambition. There's nothing to do with his height. Did you know that in most business schools today, the story of Ray Kroc is held in almost as high esteem as that time the Dutch bought Manhattan for a handful of shells? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, Ray, you are my favorite entrepreneur to be portrayed in cinema by someone who also played Batman 30 years ago when they were in their prime. <laughs> I'll end this by saying that uh, from the bottom of my heart, you look like Lyndon Baines Johnson if he were more of a pervert. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <Moving along. laughs> okay, we got to keep the show going. Our next hey, round is me, Moses, Thomas Edison. Let's go. Okay, Thomas, you look like if uh, Edison did a Freaky Friday experiment to switch bodies with the fullback at Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Thomas Edison invented audio recording so he could lay down some tracks for his mixtape. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the town of Edison, New Jersey was called that after you. Having a town in New Jersey named in your honor, it's like McDonald's putting a plaque of you on their dumpster. <laughs> it's like having a water fountain in Flint, Michigan named after you. <laughs> John, it's like being a missing kid they named the pedophile alert after. <laughs> <laughs> Edison tried to prove direct current was worse than alternating current by using it to electrocute an elephant. <laughs> what the hell does that prove, you psychopath? That's the like Coca-Cola trying to prove Pepsi is worse by electrocuting an elephant. <laughs> you sick fuck. I love that you're from New Jersey and you invented the first ever audio recordings. It's like, hey, Maron, I'm fucking inventing over here. <laughs> it's probably all over the microphone each. Hey, go ahead, be my guest. Use AC current, but I'd hate that something should happen to your precious little elephant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a New York Jewish accent into New Jersey Italian. Very few can pull that off, by the way. <laughs> you were always experimenting in 1871. You married a 16 year old employee named Mary thus proving the famous scientific hypothesis, which is if there's grass on the infield, you can, in fact, play ball. <laughs> Great. I have to make fun of God's first round draft pick. I'm definitely going to hell. Um, you claim that God spoke to you through a burning bush. I burned some cattle cushion, spoke to God myself, so you're not really special. Um, you drown more men than a cocaine fueled dolphin. I hope you're proud of yourself. Um, I had to Google your story because Thomas Edison believes in science, not made up stories about a man with a magic stick. Uh, pro tip to anybody who wants to Google a man with a magic stick don't. You'll end up with graphic videos of a man named Lexington Steele. He is not a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> you had your brother speak up for you because you you had a lisp. 
Uh, that's just terrible. And that's my time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three rounds left. Just three more rounds. Stick around to find out the winner. Next round, L. Ron Hubbard versus Napoleon. L. Ron, you're up. Napoleon looked like if Sergeant Pepper was a Cabbage Patch kid. You <laughs> a novel, although it was more likely a short story. Who's with me? <laughs> All right. I love how you tried to bring slavery back. A real make Haiti great again campaign, I think. All right. <laughs> Napoleon was short, and that's uh, part of what made him such an asshole. But in reality, he was of average height and above average asshole. Napoleon <laughs> discovered his wife was cheating on him. And I must say, shout out to the man that had the balls that were to sleep with a, the spouse of one of the world's most terrifying men. That pussy must have been amazing. <laughs> While Napoleon's out, you're just going to smash his wife. Good for you. Good for you. The man also slept with Mrs. Genghis Khan, Mrs. Adolf Hitler, and Mr. Ann Coulter. That's my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah. Napoleon. Ah, oui, oui. Erwan Hubbard. The L, of course, stands for large. <laughs> A failed sci-fi novel writer, founder of Scientology, or as the founding fathers of America would have referred to him, a big time mistake. That's what religious freedom was, big time mistake. We should not have done that one. <laughs> You know, according to a pamphlet I received on the street one time from a nice young man who probably had no daddy issues, L. Ron Hubbard was six feet, two inches tall. Okay, look, it's a tall man. Okay, if being tall is a virtue, take L. Ron Hubbard. Okay, take him home. See how that works out for you. What I'm saying is there's nothing wrong with being short. Not that I am or ever was. Okay, but who would you rather be trapped on a boat out to sea with? Short Napoleon or tall Elrond Hubbard? Okay, sound off in the comments. All right, I know how that's going. Uh, it's rumored that this one's bad, is that uh, Elrond's love of the ocean and boats came from his own buoyancy, which was considerable because of his flab on his flabby body. He was a big guy. <laughs> Elrond Hubbard looks like one of those tiny Buddha's figurines that you'd get in Chinese takeout if it had been in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a casting director for Mad Men and was looking for someone sweatier and creepier and more misogynistic, I would cast Elrond Hubbard. <laughs> Elrond Hubbard's most famous book was, of course, Dianetics. No, Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc. I said Dianetics. Ray, Ray thought I said diabetics, which is what he refers to his customers as. <laughs> Anyway, Elrond wrote the Dianetics, which wasn't all that bad, okay? It wasn't all bad. In fact, to this day, it's the only Ole book that makes Mormons look like perfectly normal people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Elrond, I'll leave by saying this. You are the best thing to have ever happened to Clearwater, Florida. And I mean that in the worst way possible. <laughs> 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 All right, moving into the last two rounds. Edison versus L. Ron Hubbard. Edison, you're up. Uh, L. Ron Hubbard, your religion is more made up than Moses' religion. Um, you look like Beethoven with a methamphetamine problem. <laughs> <laughs> You've recruited more people to abuse than the Boy Scouts of America. <laughs> and, damn, son. Damn, damn, damn son. <laughs> you probably leave off that one. You were six feet, two inches tall. This is what they say. I think you were lying. Uh, you, spent your last, you spent your last few months of life in a trailer home outside of a ranch in California, which is where you should have started in the first place. You're from Nebraska. You're not a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And if and Will, Will Smith, uh, well, not, if your or your orgies, I'm sorry, slash your Scientology meetings don't um make you any money, maybe you and Ray Kroc could hook up and uh make a Scientology burger, which is made of a, maybe cat turds and uh whatever the hell else you're selling. And that's my time. <laughs> Wow. wow. Tommy, Tommy, good try. <laughs> I recall the night I expected the light bulb. He waited until the sun went down. He turned on that bulb and was devastated to find out that even at night he was still black. <laughs> Thomas didn't speak a single word until he was four years old. You all know that. At which point, he didn't say a word, he uttered a phrase. He said, I'll take credit for that. <laughs> Thomas Edison helped with many great advancements. In fact, before him, uh, while people had a good idea, an image of a torch would appear above their heads. <laughs> Thomas Edison and Nicholas, uh, Nikola Tesla battled over which of their electric currents was superior, a battle that would change the world forever, a battle that would eventually lead to the Battle of all nerds between Bill Gates and Steve Jobs over which device was better suited to allow pedophiles to watch teenagers lip sync to popular music and dance in their underwear. <laughs> Thank you for that. By the way, what do Ray Kroc and Thomas Edison's wife have in common? Over one of the Indians, sir. A claim for which I have no actual evidence. Uh, however, I uh, do, do nothing based on actual evidence whatsoever. I, uh, so I, and in conclusion, uh, seeing as I speak in terms of science fiction, it is my firm belief that Thomas Edison was one of the greatest inventors of all time, verified by one of the most brilliant uh, inventions indeed, concrete furniture. Concrete furniture. <laughs> Genius, yes, nothing to curl up around the fireplace with a good book, quite like concrete. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're down to our last round. <laughs> okay, we're ready for the last round, everybody. Let's get uh let's get the, the emoji of the, the symphony guy with the little monocle in the chat. If you're ready for the <laughs> the guy who's like, good heavens, let's get that guy in the <laughs> round. Okay, the last round coming up. Ray Kroc versus Moses. Ray, let's go. You know, uh, <laughs> Moses, I didn't quite realize that fictional characters were allowed on this roast. Thought we had to be real. <laughs> 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 Moses, a man holier than Facebook's privacy contract. <laughs> a biblical figure among the greats, such as Adam and his wife Eve, who, of course, God created out of one of Adam's McRibs. <laughs> Moses, famous for bringing the Ten Commandments to the world, of which my personal favorite is the number two. Hold the pickle. Extra mayo, please. <laughs> Uh, Moses is probably the most famous character in the Christian Bible, I think. Except, wait, there's someone later in that book that got big, right? No. no. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what that sound is. Uh, but it's coming from Moses. So oh, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, oh, lucky, <laughs> lucky break that as a baby, Moses was adopted by the queen. Funny, though, I didn't realize Napoleon ever adopted any kids. <laughs> <laughs> Moses led his people to the land of milk and honey, but he would have saved himself a lot of money by taking to the land of powdered milk product and corn syrup. Pretty dumb, my friend. Pretty dumb. <laughs> You know, Moses is so stupid, he used a bunch of energy to part the Red Sea. Guess he couldn't figure out how boats worked. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Moses lived to be 120 years old, which is coincidentally half the shelf life of a McDonald's French fry. <laughs> Uh, you know, rumor has it that Hollywood is remaking the Ten Commandments film and casting a more age-appropriate actor to play Moses, the corpse of Charlton Heston. <laughs> Damn, son. You know, uh, a lot of people don't know that the Ten Commandments tablets were a target for thieves, which spurred Moses to utter that famous phrase, you can have these tablets when you pry them from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> uh, not to be stereotypical or anything, but I like to think of Moses as a biblical Larry David, and I must say with that whole Exodus thing, Moses did pretty <laughs> last thing i'll say about moses is that uh, he bent to the will of everything god the father asking him to do making one of the bible's biggest daddy boys daddy's boy i said that right i nailed that last one all right that's <laughs> Ray, let me let me start with a question. Uh, why is the McFlurry machine always broken, you rich piece of shit? <laughs> Has it ever worked? <laughs> McFlurry is a part of the Mandela effect. We all think we've had one, but they've never actually been able to sell a working McFlurry. <laughs> there are 38,976 McDonald's locations in the world. And even more impressive, there's blood and shit on the bathroom floor of every last one of them. <laughs> Scientists now believe that the fruit bat who started this pandemic originally got coronavirus from the toilet seat in a McDonald's bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Damn, son. <laughs> I went on the slide in a McDonald's play area once in 1996, and I've had a staph infection ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Anti-vax moms let their kids play in the McDonald's ball pit to give their kids natural immunity without vaccine. <laughs> Before you, uh, you can go into any McDonald's in the country and you'll see a true racially and economically diverse cross-section of America all at their absolute lowest moment of the day. <laughs> it's like humans in New York, but for who's about to have diarrhea in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> There's more harmful chemicals in a Big Mac combo meal than the entire Chernobyl disaster. <laughs> Do you ever notice that every addict's rock bottom story always includes a visit to McDonald's? <laughs> at one point, following a one legged male prostitute to buy meth, they always stop at McDonald's for a snack or to put someone off behind the building. <laughs> Anyway, speaking of needing to turn your life around, is there anything more pathetic than a McDonald's salad? <laughs> wow, four croutons sprinkled on some iceberg lettuce. What a meal. Get more nutrition and flavor eating styrofoam off the ground. <laughs> McDonald's putting salads on the menus like when Sports Illustrated puts an overweight model on the cover. <laughs> It's the right thing to do, but we all know they don't belong. <laughs> and the story of chicken nuggets. Finally, it's why Ray Kroc is rich. Because, you know, most people see the undesirable parts of the chicken that even Asian people won't eat. And they're like, that's disgusting. But Ray Kroc, he was like, let's take that cartilage and those beaks and those ball bladders and we'll grind them up and cut the sludge into squares, deep fry it, and then sell it to children as food. You're an evil mastermind. <laughs> That's because when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Or in McDonald's case, when life gives you water, sugar, and less than 1% lemon flavoring, you make lemonade. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of the show. <laughs> well, uh, I guess we're going to tabulate the votes in a second. Um but thank you for uh, watching. I'm going to take off this beard now. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. Thank you for watching uh, in quarantine. I know it's not the normal roast we're used to, but I had fun. I hope you had fun at home watching. Thanks for participating. Um, yeah. Thanks to you. Um, I thought. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought um, I should go around and um, just, you know, 
uh, I guess introduce everyone. So uh, we'll start Ray Kroc. That's uh, Lindsey Deming. Give it up for Lindsey. Um, hold on. We're going to put the little banner in the thing so you can follow. You should follow every performer on social media if you're watching. I'm um, a woman. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we're cool. Um, yeah, follow Lindsay. Lindsay uh, does a great show called Church Night. Um, it's hilarious. They're doing a lot of streaming versions, and um, she does them uh, also with Landon, who has played Napoleon. Give it up for Landon. Hello. Hilarious show. You should definitely uh, check that out um, live when we come back to being live, and but also their online streams. And uh, Thomas Edison was Sarome Russell. Uh, give it up for Sarome. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah Jerome's great online social media a lot of great tweets and um uh, videos he's always putting out it's good stuff and he's hilarious stand up and then uh finally uh l ron hubbard ramin mostafavi and uh make sure you follow ramin also ramin's got a great show called uh couples therapy um, that's also great live, but you've been doing it online, and I think it's been going really well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so definitely check that out. And um, yeah, I've been Benji Himmelfarb. Um, <laughs> I'm bored. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, look out for future Time Machine Roast when we come back live, and um, we're maybe we'll do another streaming one, and check out the Time Machine Roast at my social media. We're posting videos all the time, so if you like the show, um, thanks to the Kennedy Center staff. Shout out Dylan Meyer, uh, co-creator of this show. Always got a shout out. And uh, we really appreciate everyone who helped make this show possible. Thanks so much. Have a great night. Good night. Hey guys, awesome. Hi guys. Au revoir. <laughs>